Thank you, and I want to thank our witnesses for, uh, uh, for testifying today. And I am very interested to hear what uh, members of the panel have to say about the bottlenecks in our uh, nation's supply chain, because it is truly a crisis. Thanksgiving stands to be the most expensive ever, and if you're not getting ahead of your holiday shopping now, um, you're likely going to find limited options uh, the closer that we get to Christmas. The general public, quite frankly, is extremely uh, concerned by this. And every person um, that's going to be uh, testifying today represents essential workers are feeling the impacts of this crisis firsthand. The companies and workers that you represent kept our economy running uh, during COVID-19, during the pandemic, and we all appreciate that work and it's ongoing. Um, but the pandemic made us recognize that an efficient supply chain could benefit from increased redundancies and capacities. There isn't one simple solution, and that, that's a, a fact. As the chairman pointed out, this is a very complex problem. And there are many factors that contribute to the high cost of moving goods throughout the nation's supply chain. But having said that, the policies of the president and the speaker and Leader Schumer, are, that they are pursuing are not only missing the mark, but they're making matters worse. The radical agenda that they continue to pursue through budget reconciliation and administrative actions it increases energy and transportation costs, it discourages work, and it drives up already skyrocketing inflation. And all of this is exasperating the problem. It's not fixing it. For example, the president's press conference on October 13th demonstrated both a lack of understanding of this complex issue and the fact that his administration has no real plan to solve it. I was personally offended by his call for the private sector to step up while his administration does very little but compound the problem, specifically calling out terminal operators and railways and trucking companies, shippers and, and uh, other retailers. Your companies and workers are not here to provide cover to bail out the administration's bad policies. The 100 container ships sitting outside the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach, they aren't just magically going to go away. And I also think we need to hear from those folks who aren't here today, most notably the users of the system, importers, the exporters, retail, agriculture, and the administration officials that oversee it, including the newly announced infrastructure czar. Republican members, we've already heard from many groups and individuals who wanna share their ideas on how to improve this situation. In fact, just two weeks ago, um, we convened a round table hearing uh, to hear what issues that the stakeholders themselves are facing. So I look forward to hearing from today's witnesses on their ideas, even if it's highlighting how this administration can simply do no harm, or in this case, do no more harm. Do no more harm to our supply chain by straining the workforce through application of a vaccine mandate. Do no more harm to our supply chain by turning a blind eye to state and local regulations that are interfering with interstate commerce. Do no more harm to our supply chain by encouraging regulations that upend the, the independent contracting model that so many in our supply chain uh, work through. Do no more harm by pushing environmental regulations that stop warehouses from being built or goods being moved by truck. And do no more harm to our supply chain by pushing policies that disincentivize work and vocational jobs. So I do look forward to hearing from our panelists today. And with that, I yield back the balance. 